Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com, and today we're going to talk about how to get an entry-level job in cabling. It's fairly easy to do, and this is a unique idea that you might enjoy. But before we start, you know, please subscribe. If you like these videos and you think they're great and everything else, uh, please subscribe. But not only subscribe, also hit that bell, because that bell is the fact that it will notify you anytime I put out a new video. But today we're going to talk about how to get a job in the cabling industry. And the first thing I say is, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, they, they apply for a job and a person says, oh, you're a nice person, but I need someone with experience. And the frustration is, how do you get the experience if you uh, can't get a job to get the experience? Well, I'm going to talk to you today not only how to get the job, but how to get the experience also at the same time. So the first thing I want to talk about is some of the needs that cable companies have. You always want to address people according to their needs, not your needs, you know? I had people come into my office a couple times and they say, I want to do this or I want to do that. I have a need here, I have a need there. Well, you know something, when it comes to business, you're there to fulfill the business's needs. Now, I've owned Nova Voice and Data Systems and we installed cabling all throughout the United States in every single state, multiple times, um, thousands of them. So. I know about what I need when it comes to cabling, but one of the problems that I ran into, and I often ran into this, is I would have a lot of cabling jobs for this particular week of the month. Um, and my guys are running all over the place and they would have overtime and they would be not getting everything done that needed to get done. And I would beg with the customer, please give us a, a later date or can we start earlier or things like that. And the customer would say, no, it has to be done by a certain time. No, we're going to move in this Monday and you have to be done by this weekend. So that means I had to work weekends. I had to jump in sometimes and help them with the cabling and things like that and pull other people in, you know, the, uh, the dispatcher and anyone else I could get a hold of to help with the cabling. But there's other ways to do this. And uh, with that stress that I had, because then the next week, you know, the following week, I would have no work. Now my guys would sit around. You know what happens when you have employees sitting around? They start looking for other jobs. They want to work 40 hours a week or more. And if you don't give them 40 hours a week um, or the, the hours that they agreed to that they want, then they start looking for another job. They say, hey, I'm not doing anything today. I'm tired of watching cartoons on TV. And so I'm going to start looking for other jobs at other companies. So that is a need that a company has. It needs that flexibility in, in the... So my suggestion to you would be that you would write up a, a, just a basic contract saying that you're going to be what's called a 1099. That's an independent contractor, an independent employee, that you're responsible to have your own tools. You're responsible to have your own transportation. You're not paid for time off and you're not paid for overtime. Uh, but you're willing to work for, let's say, $15 an hour. That's a suggestion. You set it at what rates you want. Now, why is this is important? Well, the other cablers might be making 12 bucks an hour. Maybe they're making $15 an hour and you're on par with them. The difference is, is that they're not paying your vacation. They're not paying you to travel to the location if they do that. That's very generous of a, an employee employer if they do that. Um, they're not paying sick days. They're not paying insurance. They're not paying retirement and things like that. So when you look at a $15 an hour employee, you're actually looking at an expense for an employer of about $25 or more uh, to hire a $15 an hour employee uh, with you know all that other time. Time's off, <laughs> people get sick, and here you got a job and someone's sick. So what you want to do is you want to go in there and say you're a 1099 independent contractor. You're going to pay your own taxes. You don't, you're not going to get vacations. You're not going to get anything else. You're probably not even going to get mileage uh, uh, using your own vehicle. Uh, of course, you can deduct those things, you know, the mileage, the expense, the tools, and everything else from your income tax. And so you can save on, on taxes that way. But you're going to have to report your own hourly wages uh, to the state and the federal government. It's not that hard to do, by the way. It is a pain, but it's not that hard to do. But... In this contract, you want to put in there that you know that they can call you any time, um, and that you're willing to work, and you won't charge them for overtime or working weekends or evenings or things like that. And cabling, a lot of times, uh, evening work is where the customer wants you. You want all the 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 
uh, the employees who are in that building that you're going to cable, you want them out of that building because it just makes it easier for you to cable. It's faster, safer, things like that. So you're going to say that. You're going to say, you know, I don't care what time it is. I don't care. I'll work 24 hours a day as long as you pay me. But here's the important thing that you need to say in writing. It needs to say that I will never uh, solicit work from your customer. So if you're getting hired by a cabling company, and they have this customer that they want to send you out to uh, to do work, they need the insurance that you'll never go after that customer, that you'll never solicit that customer. And if that customer calls you, that you'll refer that business back to the company that you contracted as a 1099 for. So you want to make sure you have that, that understanding and that it's in writing. And I tell you what, um, if I was still doing cabling, uh, I still had a business doing cabling, uh, I would think that was fabulous, man. I'd love you. And you don't have any experience? That's okay. $15 an hour, no additional cost, no sick time, no overtime. I don't have to put you in my truck, everything else. Man, I'm, I'm going to go for you uh, on that. And you need to learn? No problem. Because I, once I train you, then I can call you over and over and over again. And uh, you may have a continuing amount of work. You know, you get this with a couple companies then you're going to have some uh, issues with uh, scheduling because uh, you should have a lot of work doing that. But one of the things you got to remember also is uh, if you're a 1099, and of course we've already talked about you can't mess with that company's uh, customers ever. You can't play games with this. You got to have integrity. And integrity is the number one ingredient that you need to be successful in any industry, especially if you're going to run a business. You, you, need to be, you need to be a person of integrity. Be a person of your word. If you say you're going to be there at a certain time, be there at that time. Be ahead of time. Um, if you don't have your own truck, that's okay. If you have a car with a car, uh, uh, you know, a car top carrier, those things that go on the top, you can get yourself a six-foot ladder, um, fiberglass, not aluminum, uh, fiberglass ladder. Put your name on it. That's fine. Do not put your phone number on there. Just your name will be fine. Identify it as yours. So you need a ladder. You're going to need um, punch-down tools, a decent punch-down tools, not something you see at Costco or, or uh, you know, things like uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. You need a professional punch-down tool. I'm going to show you one of them. This is a professional punch-down tool, okay? And it, it's kind of cool. It has everything you need uh, in it. It has these little wings. Sometimes you don't use them as much as used to, but if you make a wrong punch down, um, you can uh, go in there and grab the, the cable out of the back of the patch panel. And of course, you may not know anything about color code right now. That's okay. As a 1099, working for $15 an hour, you're going to learn pretty quick. And uh, most companies are going to want that type of service where you're an independent contractor. Anyway, you need a good punch down tool. And you have these blades that fit in there. And as you fit them in there, they turn and they lock in place. And so you need the two blades. You need a 66 blade. That's for 66 blocks. And of course, if you see my other videos, you already know about how to, um, uh, the color code for 66 blocks and jacks and things like that. But really today, the, the most you're going to need is you're going to need that 110 blade. And this 110 blade has a cutting uh, side and a push down side. You don't use that push down side too much, but you are going to use that cutting edge. Uh, and they really don't wear out. They last a long time, like a lifetime. And I have mine. Actually, what I have is I have about three or four of these in my toolbox because I've noticed that sometimes someone, ah, I forgot my tool, I loaned it to my uncle, you know, and he hasn't brought it back yet. And they show up at work and it's like, why are you here if you're not ready to work? But at any rate, I've learned my lesson. So I have a couple of these. And again, the blade just goes in and you have a an edge that cuts and you'll learn all that on the job but you gotta have decent tools and i would recommend a punch down tool with the two blades i'd recommend a pluck <laughs> you can put it in your hand like this and you can put your jacks there and you punch down now also i always like the wild colored screwdrivers and you're going to need phillips and regular and a couple different sizes and also this is my preference is this little cut tool uh, really cuts the shielding off the cable really easily. They wear out after a while though. I would say, you know, maybe 50 to 100 cuts and you're going to need another one, but they're only a couple dollars. It's no big deal. 
uh, diagonal cutters. Now, I don't sell that on my website. Go to Home Depot. Get some diagonal cutters. And... Uh, uh, or Lowe's or a hardware store. They're just basic cutters, you know, things like that. But you know what you also need? You need a pouch that goes to your belt. And that pouch, the, 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 the smaller, the cheaper, the uh, ones that are made out of canvas are the best ones because they're more flexible. And you put all your basic tools in the, in the pouch. You know, a couple screwdrivers, diagonal cutters, a uh, punch down tool. And then you also just need a, a bag. Now you can get that later, but in the bag you put all your other tools. You may want to put a hammer in there and pliers and things like that that you rarely use, but sometimes it comes in handy. So you got your 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 bag tool, um, and then you have your pouch that sits on your hip. All your tools should go in that pouch. So when you're going up and down the ladder, you're not going up and down just to get a tool each time, but you got it right here on, on the side of you. And that's going to save time, and you need to work hard to prove that you're valuable to that employer. And you need to, again, to be honest, if you say you're not going to talk to those customers or not customers, if they get a hold of your phone number somehow, and then you're going to turn around and, and be nice to that customer and everything else, but then immediately uh, give it to, to the uh, company. Say, hey, I got a lead. They called me. I am not going to act on this lead. It's yours. Um, this is your customer, not mine. I work for you. Um, but you know, sometimes, um, that's all it's needed. And sometimes companies may even test you on that. You know, if they have a good friend that they do work for, they say, Hey, why don't you give this guy a call? See what he does. If I give him a lead, if you give him, you know, I need five more jacks and put in, see if he does it himself. And they may even let you do those five jacks, but that's the last time you're ever going to work for that company. So I remember once, um, I uh, had a, uh, a cabler, and, and he was pretty good at cabling. Um, uh, useless for, uh, for other things, but he was pretty good at cabling. And I sent him out to pull about 15, 16 uh, uh, jacks, you know, pull. That's what you call the cable going down the wall, call it a pull. So he had to pull 16 cables, and he had to jack them and test them and everything else. And he could have got that done in, you know, eight hours. And I would say after about an hour and a half, he came back to the office. And I said, well, what's up? And he said, ah. Guy doesn't need any more jacks, he just needed one. And I called up the customer and they said, yeah, I changed my mind, I just need one. So I said, okay, no problem. So uh, I had to give the guy the rest of the day off, pay him the minimum two or four hours, I forget which, um, that you have to pay, and uh, he went on his way. And then I decided I would just show up at that customer's location after five o'clock. And so when five o'clock came around, I showed up and guess what, there was my truck. <laughs> And there was my employee putting in the rest of the deal. Uh, and what happened was he told the company, hey, uh, this guy's charging you, you know, $125 a, uh, per drop or whatever it was at the time. He goes, I'll do it for half price and I'll do it, you know, but I had to do it later today or, or this evening or whatever it was. So needless to say, he did not drive home in his truck that night. And uh, that was the last time I ever dealt with that customer. I thought it kind of strange that... You know, he was willing to do that 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 uh, job for half the price. Uh, of course, it didn't cost him anything because he was going to use my cable and my jacks and everything else. And so he had absolutely no integrity, never worked for me again. That was it. Um, so integrity is really important in this issue. So you want to write out your little contract. It's going to be personally with you and with that company. And you can leave it blank so the company can put in their name. Uh, you know, with company XYZ or whatever it is. And you want to say that you're 1099, you got your own tools, you got your own transportation, um, you know, that uh, you'll respond within an hour of getting called or, or a message left, and you'll be happy to work with them for how many hours that they need you for. And, uh, you know, eight hours, 16 hours, whatever it is, uh, a, you know, over a weekend, that would be great. And I tell you what, most cabling companies would think you are a godsend that you would do that and don't misrepresent your abilities to say you know I, you know i know a little bit about cabling i'm willing to learn you know and and then once you get some experience in that area and you start building up a reputation and people start knowing who you are and all then what you want to do is maybe think about raising your prices a little bit um, you know maybe 20 bucks an hour but now you have experience you're making money um, you got to make sure that you report all this money to the state and, uh, 
and the federal government. But you also have write-offs now. So mileage on your vehicle is now a write-off. I think it's around 50 cents a mile now. Uh, also, all your tools that you purchase for the job, any type of training you're doing, any type of uniform. Uh, some places require um, that you have a reflective vest and a hard hat uh, when you work. So all that is written off. Uh, I don't know if your, your work boots are written off. You'd have to check. Uh, I am not a... Uh, a tax lawyer or a consultant or anything else, you need to check with those people to see what you can do. But for a minimum amount of um, uh, cost to you, uh, you could get your foot in the door. So again, uh, thank you for watching today. Uh, there's some ideas. It's how to get a job in cabling. Pretty easy. Make that contract. Talk to the owners of cabling companies. Not to the people who need cabling, but the owners of cabling companies. Uh, tell them the deal and make sure you put it in writing telling them you'll never uh, work for their customers You'll never solicit them things like that and I bet you'll be able to find a job really fast